your host, Congressman Buck McKeon. You've got to feel some great satisfaction in, in being a, a leader that's helped save 38 lives. I'll tell you, every that, time we get one is, of those, uh, it sends chills up and down your back. But you know, that's the reward that you and I are here for. As right. much as people like to think it's about power and stuff like that, it's really for helping people. Uh, my father was a physician. Uh, he got help by seeing sick people get better. Uh, we get uh, satisfaction by taking people out of difficult situations in their lives and making their life better for them. And that's what really about public service is all about. So, yes, I do feel great looking uh, back. That, on, on the higher ed, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that um, I've, I've been a real advocate for the trying to keep the cost of higher education down. You know, it's been going up for the last 25, 30 years, uh, two and a half times the rate of inflation. And uh, you must, with 14 colleges in your district, this must be a, a, a real burning issue for you because you must have a lot of people that, you know, their children are going to those schools. Now, I don't know how, how those 14 schools, how, how, they're, how they're doing, but uh, I introduced a bill uh, years ago to try to try to put a, a a stop to that, to slow it down, or or to, or to to try to bring that into reason. And I got my head handed to me. They called it uh, uh, cost controls and all different kinds of things. You know, the schools didn't didn't really want to deal with that. It, it seemed like what they were saying to me is, "Hey, we're we're fine. Leave us alone. Just send more money." And whenever we would increase Pell Grants or we increase other areas of financial aid, it seemed like tuition went up at least that much or more, and we couldn't get ahead of the game. Uh, you know, we get beat up a lot as Republicans. Uh, they say you're not interested in education, uh, just like they say we're not interested in the environment, which is ludicrous because we have children, we have constituents. Uh, I have a lot of grandchildren that are that I'm concerned about. Uh, them getting an education and uh, last year this uh, college cost reduction act uh, that was that was passed that, that I think is really again going to increase the cost to students that have the hardest time uh, getting uh, getting their education I think this this summer and this fall is going to cause a real problem for kids getting into school, getting a loan. Um, you know, I, I'd like to see people, uh, if we could keep the cost down and they could go to school without ever getting a loan, that would be the, the ultimate, that would be the best thing. But, but I guess uh, we're living in a time now where, where kids are graduating. Uh, the average loan that uh, they have on their back when, they're, when they leave school is about $19,000 now. Uh, they have a mortgage and no home. You know, they've got to make that payment mm -hmm. for, for a long time. And, um, you know, what they did, uh, that bill that they passed where they hit the lenders, took away the subsidy, made it harder for them to uh, make the loans to the kids. And now we're getting hit with kind of a perfect storm where uh, the funding isn't there, the financing isn't there for these lenders to sell off their loans to get the money back to make more loans is uh, I think going to cause us real problems this year and I just sent a letter to the secretary to to alert them and, and tell them to watch this because I've been following student lenders are laying off people they're not wanting to make the loans through the FELD program because they've taken the subsidy away that that makes it possible and then to make private loans they can't get the capital, and they have to charge the students more for it. And it's, I think it's going to cause a real major problem that, you know, we're, I, I just every opportunity want to want to alert people to this mm -hmm. so that they make a, appropriate plans because that's going to be a very difficult situation. I think that, uh, that not a lot of people are looking at right now, but it's going to cause major problems uh, this year. And... Uh, and it all comes from the bill that that uh, the Democrats did last year that they called college cost reduction that's actually going to make it harder to get a college education and more expensive to get a college education. 
I'll get off my soapbox <laughs> on, on that a little bit, but I think it's important that people understand and are aware that, that that's coming down the road. Um, on, the, on the higher education reauthorization, this is one thing that we have been able to work with on the Demo with the Democrats in a bipartisan way. We got it passed in the last Congress, died in the Senate, but uh, they've basically taken that bill up, made some changes, and it's something that we've been able to work on in a in a bipartisan way. We passed it out of committee with, uh, I think it was 45 to nothing, and, and we passed it on the floor. How do you, you what are some of the things that you see in that bill that are going to be helpful to your constituents uh, as they try to uh, to go to college, to get their education, to be uh, participate in fully in the American dream? Well, having 14 colleges in my district, obviously, yeah. that's a major economic impact. Um, so, anytime you start to talk about college education, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, number one, there's a there's a need for students uh, to be able to afford the colleges. On the other side, the colleges are very dependent on their being able to come up with some funding to actually drive their programs and be supportive. Um, I mean, there are, there are, uh, and I would say that of the colleges that are in my district, they don't they don't come with a kind of endowment programs that say a Harvard does or a, a Yale does or a Princeton uh, your Ivy League schools, which uh, have significant sums of money behind them. So, what's um, what size are these schools? Well, mostly, um, uh, well, they have one like Monroe Community College. Uh, Monroe Community College probably has twenty-five thousand students. Uh, wow. So, the community college, mm -hmm. uh, Rochester Institute of Technology (RIT) is another one of the big ones. This would be probably up to forty thousand when you include the uh, graduate and undergraduate programs. Those are the two larger ones. Then you'd have uh, schools that you may have heard of, like Elmira College. Uh, I think it was the first women's college established in the country. Um, mm -hmm. um, Cornell is on the verge of being in my district, but it's not included in the district. That's an Ivy League school, as you know. Alfred University. Alfred University has one of the best ceramic engineering programs in the world. Um, very technical programs there. But there again, those schools are run Say the Elmiras, the Cucas, uh, the Alfreds run uh, two to three to four thousand students, so they're smaller mm -hmm. uh, as far as popu uh, student population goes. Mm -hmm. But they become very dependent upon uh, the Pell Grant monies to be able to subsidize because they don't have the endowments to be able to provide the financial aid for these students to be able to come at relatively low cost to the students, which is one of the uh, issues that it becomes. I mean, most of these students. Um, uh, are comes from New York State. There's not a lot of, particularly the smaller schools. Uh, so there's not a big transient population like you would see uh, if you went to the Harvard and student enrollments. You see mm -hmm. kids from all over the world mm -hmm. and all over the country. Uh, you don't have that kind of a national attention being paid to, to these particular schools. So the the support that comes in from federal grants, uh, like Pell grants, is very important. And as a matter of fact, I've had three, four, five of these schools in my office since the last week mm -hmm. just talking about the importance of our various kind of programs and looking for uh, some help in one area or another, whether it's training programs for this or whether it has to be something else. Because as you know, many of these uh, schools today are not just educational uh, systems. They're uh, what I would call the economic engines, really, of a community, and they have to be thought of that, whether it's training mechanisms for uh, tasks like uh, the healthcare industry or something like that, uh, which one of the schools is, Nazareth College, which is up in uh, Rochester, um, or whether it has to be just a straight you know, teacher education, uh, um, that uh, they're very important. So the continuation of programs of the federal involvement to make eligibility easier for students is important, to, certainly to my, from both sides, from the educational component for students, but also from the economic standpoint of the colleges that are there. 